Hey, what's up everybody? This is Brian and welcome back to Saving Data in Iowa's video tutorial series. In this video tutorial, I'll be diving into NS user defaults. I'm going to show you what it is and how you can start using it in your app. NS user defaults is a way for users to custom customize the app based on their preference. Let's say you are working on a book reading app. You may have a property that allows users to set the font size. You could save that property in NS user defaults and make sure that preference wouldn't be lost. Keep in mind, you can also use NS user defaults for internal values of your app as well. Every time an app is installed on, dev on a device, a new data store for NS user defaults is created. The big question is, what can this data store contain? Well, you only have six types to choose from. You can save from the following. You can save to the following a string, an NS data, an NS number, an NS, NS date, a dictionary, and an array. Working with NS user defaults is really easy. You just need to call the class method standard user defaults on the NS user defaults object. The good news is that the object, the NS user defaults object, is thread safe. Data is organized in NS user defaults, much like a dictionary. You're fetching and saving based on keys. If you want to fetch data, the NS user defaults object has methods for you to fetch data based on the type. For instance, if you want to find out if the user has rated the app, you simply call the method bool for key, passing in the key. Setting data is just as easy. Again, the methods are based on type. If you wanted to set a bool, you would call set bool for key. It's critical that you get the key right, otherwise you won't be able to retrieve it. Committing your saves to the store is done by calling the synchronize method. Once this happens, all your data is saved. This method is entirely optional as iOS will be calling this method at periodic in intervals. An important time to manually call this method would be if the app is about to be terminated or sent into the background. Apple has provided another store for you to use and it's called NS Ubiquitous Key Value Store. And it's, this is actually saved to iCloud. Now, before I continue, let me state that this video tutorial series will not cover iCloud in any way. This is as close as it gets. NS Ubiquitous Key Value Store is simply an iCloud-backed version of NS User Defaults. To use it, you have to include an iCloud entitlement with your app for this to function. Once you have that, you can start reading and writing to it. To get a reference to it, you're going to call NS Ubiquitous Key Value Store Default Store, and, you, and it works exactly as NS User Defaults, except now it saves to iCloud. There are a few things to keep in mind. First, Apple recommends that if you're doing anything critical with your app, you should store it in NS User Defaults. That way your app will still continue to function even when it's offline. Also, the total amount of data that you can store is just one megabyte and the keys can only be 64 bytes long. When you're ready to commit your changes, you'll synchronize the same way as you did with NS user defaults, except the method call is more of a hint than an actual statement. iOS will ultimately determine when it saves so the data may not be immediately committed to iCloud. Finally, if there's any conflict with the current version to the saved version on iCloud, then the latest change overrides the old, older one. In this demo, I'm going to be showing you how you can work with user defaults. And to do that, I've created a very simple app. I'm going to build and run this app. And you can see this simply takes a first name, a last name, a various mood, and an image that you can pick. When I select the image here, I can just choose a moment like so, and it will fill this in. Now, when I stop this app and rerun it, you can see that none of the data is saved. What I want to happen is that when the user taps the save button, it should save the data. And when the next time the user reopens the app, all that data should be displayed inside of the app. And the way we're going to be saving this data is by using user defaults. The first thing I'm going to do is fill out my save data IB action. To do this, I need to get a reference to my user defaults. And I can do this by simply getting the class NS user defaults and calling the static method on it standard user defaults like so. So the first thing I'm going to do is save the text fields. And I'm just going to call set object. 
And you can see when I type set, I have all these different options available to me. I can set the Boolean, double, float, integer, and so forth. And for the key, I'm gonna call this first name. I'm gonna do this the same for the last name as well. Next, I'm gonna set the mood, and the mood's going to be an integer. So instead of calling set object, I'm gonna call set integer instead. Next, I wanna save the image. First, I'll see if the user has actually picked an image. If the user has picked an image, then I'm going to take that image and convert it into an NS data. And I do this by using UI image ping representation. Once I have that data set, then I can just simply call set object. And I'll make the pick image button disappear. Now that we can save data, I want to display the data when the user starts off. And you'll notice I didn't synchronize my user defaults. Remember, iOS will take care of that for me. But if there's a time when I do need to synchronize, I can simply call user defaults synchronize like so. Typically, I would do that if, say, my app was about to be terminated. OK, now I want to restore everything that I saved in my view did load. Like before, I'm gonna get a reference to my user defaults. Now I'm gonna populate my text fields. And I'm simply gonna call object for key. And from there, I'm gonna cast this into a string. I'll do this for the last name as well. Next, I'm gonna set the selected segment index. Remember, it's important that you use the same keys to restore those values as the same keys that you use to save them. If you don't, then you will not be able to retrieve that data. Finally, I'm going to get the image data. Once I have the image data, it's just a matter of creating a new UI image from it. Now I'm going to build and run. I'll add my first name and my last name, and I'll set, I'll set the emotion to meh, and then I'm gonna pick an image. And we'll just pick any image here, and I'll save. At this point, I've saved all this data to user defaults. I'm gonna stop the app, now I'm going to restart it again. And you can see all the fields are set already. Right away, you can see that the first name is set to Brian and the last name is set to Brian. Obviously, I made a typo. I'm just gonna go up to my save function here and you can see I've used the first name. I saved the first name for the first name and the first name for the last name. We'll restart, and now I'll save again. Let's stop, restart the app, and you can see the correct information has been saved. That's it for this video tutorial, but as always, we'd like to leave off with a challenge. In your challenge, you're going to save how many times the user has opened an app. On the 10th time, you'll prompt him or her to rate the app. For more information, check out the challenge document. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.